Hello there, my fellow wandering rogue traders, and welcome back to some 40k lore. In today's edition of our Liber Xenologis narrations, I thought I'd go through some other esoteric stories as conveyed to us by Captain Drake. The gimmick, if you will, of today is that these stories are fabulations of events that may or may not have happened in the Imperium, and they are known as the Tales of Ibra Carabula. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? During my youth, I read all six volumes of Rabula's tales. In my opinion, they are among the greatest works of imagination ever written. Rabula was famous in his day as a raconteur and fabulist who could spin a story out of the most basic premise. However, since leaving Terra, I have been surprised to find that many of the goblins and sprites named by Rabula in his stories are actually the names of Xeno species. Stranger still, it is not only the names that seem to match, but the nature and morphology of some of the creatures also seem to fit Rabula's descriptions. Next, I listed several examples. The Vorni. In the Tale of the Chalice, Lord Regius becomes immortal by taking a golden chalice and drinking a single drop of blood stolen from a warrior called Saint Vorni. The blood of Saint Vorni fills Regius with such power that he slaughters his foes, but he ends the story in the thrall to Vorni, who, it transpires, had sown the seeds of dissension against Lord Regius from the beginning, with the single purpose of possessing Regius and ruling through him. In the Plyan system, the Space Marines of the Blood Angels had waged a long and difficult campaign against a Xenos race known as the Vorni. The Vornic armies were eventually defeated, but many are believed to have escaped the system in warp-capable void ships. Local xenologists have published reports that describe the Vorni as hulking bipedal crustaceans, almost as tall as the Astartes warriors who defeated them, and armed with mighty weapons called thermic accelerators. The Blood Angels have been very reluctant to share any information with the wider Imperium about the campaign, or their reasons for seeking out the Vorni to begin with. I did manage to unearth one scrap of information, however. The Blood Angels described the Vornic leaders as mighty psychers, with the ability to possess the minds of their enemies. The Ujvar In the Tale of Rags, King Ujvar is robbed of his throne and banished to the Ashen Desert, wearing nothing but rags. His soul is so noble though that he gives his rags away, one by one, to help those he meets along the way, even though his skin burns as a result. At the culmination of the story, it is revealed that the people he helped along the way were all the god emperor in disguise. The emperor replaces Ujvar's rags with a suit of indestructible auric warplate, and grants King Ujvar a lightning sword, with which to strike down the usurpers. King Ujvar returns home bathed in holy wrath, and slaughters all those that betrayed him. Meanwhile, in the Zaka system, on the moon of Abarim, there is reported to be a race of revenants called the Ujvar, who have no flesh of their own, but clothe themselves in the skins of defeated foes. The Vibis In Rabula's Tale of the Serpent, there is an evil river snake called Uzal Vibis, who tracks Prince Cabo to his death, trapping him in riverweed and leaving him to die. I have since learned that there is a race of sentient mores called the Vibis, who dwell on the world of Lugador, and are alleged to have built vast cities beneath the planet's many oceans. As yet, the Imperium has not found the resources to root out this threat, so, for now at least, the Vibis remain in ignorant bliss, unaware of the doom that hangs above them. The Byzaks Rabula here describes a bear with two heads called a Byzak whose mood can alternate depending on which head is facing forward. In the tale of Lady Vetara, the eponymous protagonist tries to hack up the cruel head, but finds it was masquerading as the benign one. In the Durotorum sector, I heard rumors of towering, clawed, hairy creatures called Byzags, whose heads can rotate 360 degrees and have a face on either side. Happy exorcist noises in the background. 
the Mog. In the Tale of the Glutton, the greedy hero, Morsel Mog, is eventually destroyed by his own gluttony, becoming a sentient lake of meat and wine that pleads desperately to be given human form again. In the Vajria system, there have been several military engagements with a race known as the Mog. Early reports from the Explorator fleets suggested that these amorphous, spirit-like entities were most likely emanations of the warp, but later studies revealed them to be a liquid-based life-form, sentient, able to communicate, and even able to converse in a crude form of gothic. They seem capable of summoning weapons at will from their own bodies, and once they had been declared Xenos Horrificus and attacked, the Mog proved to be almost unkillable. The battle to the Vadria system is supposedly raging to this very day, and knowing the myriad enemies that now face the Imperium, I doubt there will be any resources available to tackle a small-scale threat such as the Mog. The Therion In the Tale of the Changeling, the young hero, Prince Elias, is robbed of his rightful throne by a sorcerer called Therion. Therion murders the current king and then swaps his appearance for Elias's, forcing the real prince to flee the kingdom. Elias doesn't return for many years, until he finds and smashes the enchanted mask that Therion keeps in his hidden tower. In the Actaea system, Imperial Navy escorts were attacked by a race called the Therion. At first they reported that they had the situation under control, but then they became confused by the unannounced arrival of other Imperial Navy vessels identical to their own. Shortly after that, all communication ceased, and the ships were eventually reported as lost. Little else is recorded about this mysterious species beyond a few tantalizing facts. They are described in an ancient Magus Biologus in this way, and I quote, Therians are large, blubbery bipeds with tusks that reach from their mouths to their waists. They have an innate psychic ability that enables them to assume the forms of other species. They have the ability to mask their void ships in a similar way. Now, I do not have the space to list all the species that seem to correspond to characters in Rabula stories, but suffice to say they are far too numerous to be explained away by pure coincidence. There are few records of Rabula's life, but I suspect we would do well to find out what we can about him, even if it is just by rereading the stories in an attempt to decipher the codes and the riddles contained inside. It would also be fascinating to learn how he obtained such a wealth of knowledge. The scraps of biological information we have make no mention of him ever leaving Terra. So how is it that his fictional creations seem to describe Xenos that had yet to be discovered? Misinformation, rumor and misdirection have long been the enemies of Xenology. It has dragged the science into disrepute and even endangered lives. The list of apocryphal tales is too long to be included here. There are a few recurring myths, however, that have been regurgitated so many times that I feel the need to quash them now and set the record straight. Any text that refers to the following species is at best ill-informed, and at worst deliberately misleading. The following Xeno species are entirely fictional, and any mentions of them should be given no credence. The Undead Dynasties of the Silent King on dozens of worlds I encountered ridiculous tales of metal-clad revenants that dwell in tombs and periodically rise up to steal away living beings and murder them. These deathless warriors are claimed to be immortal, on account of being already dead, and equipped with objects of incredible technological advancement, gifted to them by the necromantic beings that originally delivered them from their mortal flesh. Stories of the dead rising from their graves have, of course, been with humanity since the beginning of recorded history, but the credence given to these particular fantasies is dangerous. Fraudulent xenologists have invented such detailed stories of undead dynasties that entire fleets have been deployed or redirected in an attempt to tackle a non-existent threat. With the Imperium so hard-pressed, we must do everything we can to ensure that talk of these dynasties is ignored. The Kondhounds are winged semi-canids and a staple of myth right across the worlds of the Nelda sector of the Segmentum Obscurus. The most outlandish tales claim that they are humanoid and sapient, with the capacity to produce void-faring vessels and plasma weaponry, 
These particular stories originate with the now discredited Bibliothèque Xenologus. The so-called Phycene Skur are described as beautiful humanoids with serpentine tails and dazzling mirror armor. The nomads of Salhad tell about how, while praying in the desert, they saw the Skur descend from the heavens, bathed in holy light. The Skur then proceeded to butcher the local people, feeding hungrily on their intestines. In place of blood, they had fire, and when wounded, they leaked flame. The nomads of Salhad indulge in week-long fasting and mainly ingest hallucinogens when they eat, so it is incredible to me that their stories were ever treated as anything but fantasy. The Manaljar are humanoid amphibians, reputed to have mastered the art of time travel. I was surprised to find that members of the usually well-informed Eldari race have fallen for this particular hoax, and have spent valuable time and resources attempting to locate the mythical homeworld of the Manaljar called Naub. The Talopa Slavers are humanoid giants, alleged to be fearsome in appearance, and that their enemies can rarely face them in battle without fleeing. In an attempt to garner glory, a rogue trader called Polygnan Surt concocted an elaborate story that triggered all the subsequent hysteria regarding the Talopas. He boasted that he had slain one of them in a void battle just outside Messon 4, and that he had retrieved its charred remnants from the planet's surface. From the picked captures that I've seen, it looks as though he has grafted together various body parts, and then burned them to disguise his handiwork. As a result of these absurd claims, several Imperial Navy frigates were sent to Messon 4, and they were never heard from again. Surt had also vanished, and I cannot help but think it is for the best. The Zutan Scribes The sketches of so-called Zutan Scribes show kraken-like leviathans with many tentacles. All the myths representing the Zutan refer to a race of scholars and archivists, seeking and hoarding information for a purpose known only to them. Several reputable xenologists have refuted claims that the Zutan are a genuine race, suggesting that the tales originated in sightings of oversized octobotiforms. The oct are a form of colossal annelid or leech that is described as swimming through the void. Legends tell of how they encircle void ships and eventually crush them with their huge girth, before devouring the entire crew. On the world of Nab, the oct are worshipped as star gods, on Midwinter's Eve, locals will dress themselves in sacks and float down rivers, singing drunken hymns to these entirely fictitious creatures. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to narrate for you today from the Liber Xenologus. Sadly, this is likely to be our final video based on the accounts of Captain Drake. It has been a very rich, very interesting, and very long adventure, but alas, usually good things do come to an end eventually. Still, 24 videos is far more than I ever imagined being able to do when I started this. I initially considered this an expansion of my older Xenos Bestiary series, but it turned out to be a thing of its own, and a nice thing at that. As for future videos on the Thursday slot, I might actually return to Necromunda for a while. As always, do share your thoughts or suggestions in the comments below, both on today's topic and the Liber Xenologis as a whole if you want. Thanks a lot for watching and supporting this series, and I wish you all a healthy and awesome day. The Emperor Protects.